But first, we start with the devastation in Morocco. Today, that country rocked by an aftershock, the death toll rising to 2,100 people. And Shamim Chowdhury on the ground for us in Marrakesh. Uh, Shamim, I know that you are in front of rubble behind you, that rescue crews have been going through it. Uh, can you describe the rescue efforts as they're going tonight? Well, Natasha, 48 hours after the devastating earthquake hit, a large part of Morocco rescue, uh, rescue workers are racing against time to find survivors. Now, rescue professionals say that 70, the first 72 hours after any earthquake is the crucial period during which survivors can be found. They still have a day to go to find any survivors. The challenge they face, however, is that the epicenter of the earthquake was in the high Atlas Mountains. It's very remote. Uh, there is very little infrastructure there at the best of times. It's a very impoverished area, very little by way of communication and health facilities and very treacherous roads made worse since the earthquake by rock slides and rubble. Now, we're being told that one of the main roads leading to these remote villages has now been cleared and rescue workers can uh, steam ahead with their work. Now, the rule of this country, King Mohammed VI, has has uh, launched a very specialist uh, rescue mission of a specialist rescue force and he has enlisted the military that's land and air to be central to that operation now i say it's a race against time we have been seeing some very disturbing images that have been coming out from these areas people talking about how they've lost their entire families entire families being killed we've even heard about mass burials they're talking about a complete lack of food complete lack of shelter medical supplies. However, a local news agency has announced in the past few hours or so that the government has set up a special fund. Now, it is hoping to raise money through public funds, private funds, and through the public, and that will all go towards helping the survivors and to helping rebuild the parts that have been devastated by this earthquake. Sh Shamim, are you aware at this time, are they still pulling survivors from the rubble? Is there still hope in this search tonight? There is still hope, and we know that they are working around the clock, and they have been, and certainly they will be working through the night. In terms of survivors, a local agency uh, reported earlier on today that an elderly woman had been found something like 12 hours after the uh, earthquake struck. That's all we know in terms of numbers. There is still hope. There are still families who are waiting for their loved ones uh, to be pulled out. Uh, it's certainly not unheard of in other cases where there been earthquakes um, in equally challenging circumstances. People have been pulled out five, six days, even longer after the earthquake have struck. So people are not losing hope here, but there's also a very sense of, a very real sense of, um, of managing expectations. They know that as time goes by, the chances of finding anyone uh, alive are slim, but they're not going to give up hope just yet. We are hearing reports of just droves of people still sleeping outside, afraid to sleep inside of a building as aftershocks are rolling through. Can you tell us what are conditions like on the ground? How are people coping with all of this? That is very much the case, Natasha, particularly in Marrakesh, where we are. Now, this city is about 72 kilometers northeast of the epicenter. Um, and it was uh, uh, affected by it, as you can see from where I'm standing. This used to be a hotel, and uh, it's more or less collapsed, although we are told that there were no fatalities here. Around half a dozen or so people in Marrakesh have been killed. But across the city, people are, it's exactly as you're saying, they've been sleeping in uh, parks, in open areas, in squares, even along the road. And the reason for that is they are too scared to go back into their homes, those whose homes haven't been damaged or destroyed. Many of them live in very slim, tall uh, buildings, and they're very concerned that they, they will, the aftershocks will bring those buildings down. There have been several aftershocks, which is to be expected. The most recent one was earlier on today, and it was 3.9 on the Richter scale. So there's a real sense of fear here among the people of this city. Not just fear, but also anger. We saw a lot of people getting very uh, upset about the fact that uh, nobody has thought about them, they are saying. They're saying that they have no toilet facilities, they have no food, they feel as though they've been neglected.
expected. We certainly haven't seen uh, much aid being distributed here. So there's a real sense of fear and anger where we are. Really appreciate that look from the ground. Shamim Chowdhury, thank you so much live for us in Marrakesh. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.